Hello everybody and welcome back to another ship review and this particular one is the one that is requested by the patrons and that means playing ships that I'm not particularly fond of although the Azumo I guess has gotten a little bit better for me still this ship overall is not one I particularly like I mean her bow is one of the few pretty parts on the ship I mean I do actually care about visual aesthetics of the ship her bow looks okay, and that's pretty much the only part that I actually kind of like. The rest of the ship I'm not hugely in love with. I guess the turrets are okay. But, I mean, the superstructure, well, that just kind of reminds me of a particular house under the sea. So how does she perform as a battleship is obviously your question, because looks, well, you can kind of ignore them if you don't really care. And I guess the first thing I should do is talk about modules. And in terms of modules, the Azumo... I mean, the A-Hull is the one you start with, and it's probably something you have to upgrade as quick as possible, as you do get a little bit more HP and quite a bit more AA. But, luckily, now on the A-Hull, you do have the top and shells that the Azumo gets, so that at least is not as big of a problem as it used to be. Aside so from that, you also could consider getting the FCS pretty early on, as it does give you quite a bit of additional range, now the engine isn't as important as without the upgraded engine you're still making a good 27 knots so I would say in terms of upgrade order go hull or FCS first but prioritize those over the engine the engine you can kind of grab last okay let's take a look at the ship in her port view in her stats and I'm talking only about the sea hull because you're really going to be spending most of the time with the sea hull grinding for the thing that really matters, the low pen machine at tier 10. So that's really why you're playing the ship. Although, if you have enough for experience, you might as well just consider skipping the Azumo. But, okay, the Azumo. HP-wise, she has the lowest HP out of all the tier 9 battleships when fully upgraded at 78,900. It is only 100 HP less than the Iowa, so that's not really such a big problem. Her armor is okay um but if you look at her armor and you also look at the way her guns are positioned you sort of get that this ship is going to spend a lot of its time bow into stuff and when you're bow into stuff you're reasonably well protected against iowas montanas other zumos of course the only problem is if you like to play when you, you actually kind of have to play the bowing meta if you run into a yamato well, you know, Yamato will low pen you for days because that is what Yamato does. Still, if you angle nicely, her armor does have the capacity to do some bouncing. However, not against Yamato's, just remember that. Okay. Oh, and also against the German battleships, you should still be okay as well, as their 420mm guns are not exactly going to be overmatching your armor. So, again, you're okay on the armor department. Torpedo protection is a bit, uh, 28%. Still the best out of the tier 9 battleships, but 28% really isn't all that great. And so torpedoes are going to be kind of scary. And especially if you are going to play bow in all the time, the ship does have something to worry about, especially when destroyers jump out from behind islands and stuff. Of course, the reason why I mention islands is because the Azumo playstyle, you're going to be at least for a portion of the battle spending some time behind islands. So, survivability is okay, but nothing really amazing. Her guns. Let's talk about her guns, because her guns are... Well, her guns, it's interesting, because in the past, the reason I really, really hated the Azumo was because her guns... Well, her guns seem to be erratic beyond belief. You fire with the Azumo and you're watching your shells go all over the place. Some high, some low, just everywhere but your target. So the Azumo became a very frustrating ship to play because you could aim really well and the shells would just be like, Nope, screw it, I'm going to go visit a completely different country over there. And you're just sitting there going, okay, whatever. They have gotten better. The Azumo guns are now at least from my experience, much, much more consistent. When you fire, they are nice. At least they're nice now in terms of how they're stacked together. They tend to be much tighter and tend to hit the target to where you're aiming. In terms of horizontal dispersion, still a little bit iffy at times, but at least vertical most of the time is better. Take a look at the gun stats. Reload time is 30 seconds, very standard. Turn traverse time, 40 seconds stock with nothing. That's actually really, really good. And 
especially when you're playing bow on, that does allow your forward guns to actually turn reasonably well. Of course, the number three turret, which faces backwards, that one is going to be awkward because if you want to go from one side to the other, that thing really has to make huge sweeping turns, probably in the range of about 270 degrees. It's that's rough. That that turret is very very rough, and um, not really. Uh, you're not really going to be using that turret much. It's mostly just going to be the front two, which is okay because you should be able to swing your turrets around reasonably fast. And also, because it has reasonably fast turret traverse, it'll also dictate one of the modules, uh, the upgrade modules um, that you're going to be using. Okay. Uh, maximum dispersion, 240 meters at 21.7 kilometers is pretty good. And like I mentioned before, her shell groupings tend to be a lot better now. When you hit home, the max AP shell damage of 12,900 is a bit lower than the I was. But you can still hit for some pretty good damage. Also, if you look at the AP shell velocity of 870 meters a second, that is really, really good. That's very high velocity, which means that the Izumo, generally speaking, it's a little bit easier to hit targets at range. So that is a bit of a plus. Her secondary armament on the Izumo, it's quite a bit like the uh, Yamato secondaries. Not as numerous. Uh, you'd have the 7 kilometer secondary guns. And if you go full secondary build, they actually do perform reasonably well. Uh, you notice that there's a bit of hesitation there. It's because for I've seen other people have secondary builds that work on the Azumo, but for me, even with all the modules and all the skills and all the flags, they still seemed kind of iffy and erratic for me. Might just be my crappy luck, but... Uh, I don't know. I mean, she's got good secondary guns, but I just wouldn't really count on them. And since her main guns now are pretty reliable, I definitely would prefer her more as a main battery uh, focus than secondary focus. Her AA guns. The Zumo's AA guns are... They're kind of crap. Uh, you have these 127mm guns, which, yeah, you have quite a bunch of them, but if you look at the damage and the range and everything compared to the Iowa, it's worse. 25mm guns, it's worse. So... Yeah, I mean, not really all that great. I mean, you do have a lot of these 25mm guns, but your A damage and everything is just not that good. Uh, yes, you have a catapult fighter to help out, but generally speaking, if even tier even tier 8 torpedo bombers coming after you, they're probably going to get through. So the Azumo's A is not very good. That's why, again, you're going to be depending a lot on maybe friends and, of course, the friendly island if you can. In terms of her maneuverability, she is now the slowest of the tier 9 battleships, going a maximum of 28 knots. Her turning circle radius is actually pretty good at 890 meters. Rudder shift time, though, is slow at 19.7 seconds. Maneuverability-wise, Izumo's kind of meh. She's alright. But again, like I mentioned before, you do spend a considerable amount of time hiding behind islands. So, yeah. The big weakness, though, for me uh, with Izumo... And maybe it is because of that enormously ugly superstructure. So ships from miles and miles away can be like, Oh my god, that thing is so damn ugly. Um, look at the detectability range by C. 19.3. And if you're on fire, 21.3. You're going to get spotted from everywhere in the ship. So you really do need to consider potentially concealment. And so we move on from the ship to the recommended uh, upgrade modules here. And I would say in the first one, get main armaments, ex uh, sorry, main armaments modification one. Um, it does help preventing things from getting knocked out, so that's kind of useful. On the second slot, I would say get aiming systems mod one. It gives you a small buff to your secondaries, but it does affect your main guns quite a bit, and that helps the 7% reduction. And so once you have that equipped, your max dispersion drops to 223, which is not bad at 21.7 kilometers. Third slot, I would now say, ideally, get main battery mod 3. And the reason why is you're sitting mostly bow in, you might as well just have better reload. And so with that module equipped, your reload time drops from 30 seconds to 26.4, which means you're going to be able to pump out more shells. Very, very important. On your fourth slot, remember you're going to be sitting bow on quite a bit, so I would say get Damacon 1, and then on the fifth slot, get Damacon 2. Again, this is to reduce the amount of time you spend on fire, quite important for a ship that likes to stay stationary at times. 
And then finally, get Concealment System Modification 1. You really need a little bit of help. With the uh, module, your surface accessibility drops down to nothing amazing, but it's 17.3. So at least better than what you have stock. And so that pretty much covers uh, your upgrade modules. Of course, don't forget to get camo paint uh, if you can. Ideally, you probably want to get the one that either offers detectability or, you know, ideally you can get the detectability and dispersion increase for the enemy. Although, I guess if you really like the ship, uh, you could always opt for the premium camo, which costs quite a bit, but does offer some perks. So a little bit more EXP gained and a reduction in the ship's uh, repair cost afterwards. And of course, the benefits from the Type uh, 1 and Type 2 camos together. And at least I guess with a camo, she doesn't look as bad. That superstructure still looks terrible, though. Okay, so now that we've accomplished all that, let's take a look at the captain skills. All right, so the Azumo's captain skills, and once again, assuming 18-point captains, um, because assuming you have 19 points is going to be incredibly silly, because the last point just takes way too much experience to get. So assuming you have 18-point 18 points captain, 18 point captains, here's what you would uh, go for. Obviously, start with basics of survivability. Anything to help with fires, your ship is going to get shot at and be set on fire quite a bit. Then, because you've gotten that module that increases your rate of fire at the expense of terror traverse, you want to get expert marksman on the second row. Then, I would say probably get superintendent. Having that extra heal does help. Get that, and then on the fourth row, get AFT, because AFT helps boost your A a little bit. Your A does need help. And then finally, with the remaining points, you have some options. You can either get additional uh, tier 3 skills, maybe. You could get, some people might say, hey, you might want to opt for a tier 4 skill. Maybe demo expert, just to increase your chances of fire, because why the hell not. Or you could get something like manual uh, secondary control. Personally, because, like I mentioned, the Azumo has way too big of a detection range stock, and it's really hard to just even get into position without getting shot at, I personally would opt for Concealment Expert, but that's me. Like I said, the reason why I go for this is because when I've played Secondary Build, it hasn't worked for me, but I've seen other people have it work. So you could always go for full Secondary Build and go for the manual uh, Secondary Control uh, skill. So you can, go, you can always do that. With the remaining three points, you can get Basic Firing Training, which boosts your AA just a tiny bit more, and also your Secondaries. Both AFT and Basic Firing Training affect your secondary, so that's also a positive uh, side effect as well from getting those skills. And then I guess with the last two points, you could get incoming fire alert as fire prevention sadly just doesn't really do all that much. So I would say incoming fire alert um, just to give yourself that extra little bit of warning about when somebody might be shooting at you from range. And so that pretty much covers the Azumo from the port view. Uh, let's move from the port view to actual battles and let's see how she performs and any sort of little tips I can give you there. And so here we go into battle, and one of the first things you really want to do when you're playing in Izumo is look for Friendly Island. So here on Land of Fire, I started playing, and a couple of my teammates are heading over to the A-cap, so I'm going to go along with them. And of course, I see this friendly little island over here at G3, and this will be my home for the first little while. And it's not actually super exciting for a little while. This battle only gets really exciting near the end. But for the first little bit, this will be the position I hold. Now, why do I like this position? Well, if you look at the island, you'll see that there's a little sort of a dip in the middle area. And that little dip will allow me to lob shells over. But at the same time, you'll see that there's sort of a bit of a high ground area. So that high ground area, if I really need it, I can go there and take cover. The reason why you want to be behind islands, or at least using an island as partial cover, is because the Azumo gets spotted really easily. And typically, if you get spotted easily, everybody focuses on you, and you're really going to get shot at a lot. And let's say you run into cruisers. Cruisers also have a tendency of firing at you with HE the minute they see you. 
uh, and of course as long as they're in range because you're pretty flammable. The Zumo, from my experience, just happens to be a ship that stuff hits your superstructure and you just burst into flames. So, try to find yourself a friendly island is usually the first stage. And also, the other thing is, if you noticed earlier, as I was heading towards the island, somebody actually took a shot at me. And that's because, again, at this particular time, I was actually running a partial secondary build, and yeah, it just it wasn't fun being the first ship just get spotted and get shot at. It. That's just not fun at all. Now, another thing to keep in mind, like I mentioned earlier, the Azumo does have pretty good shell velocity. So generally speaking, stuff at range not super hard to hit. But again, you will see at times I will get great dispersion, and there are times I'll have somewhat questionable dispersion. Just something about the ship. Still, still, regardless of everything now, she is better than she used to be. If I look at my Izumo stats from before the changes to her, and I don't really... See, I'm not really sure what they did, but the dispersion definitely seems to be much, much more consistent. But when I played the Azumo back in the day, as hard as I tried, uh, I never really got that great average damage. In fact, I saw a pretty noticeable dip from my Amagi average damage to my Azumo average damage. However, you know, trying it out all over again recently with this new sort of newer-ish Azumo, that's even a way to call it, um, it definitely did appear that my average damage has gone up quite significantly. So I'm very, very close to where my average damage for not my Amagi would be, I think. A couple thousand off, but pretty close to that. Which is actually pretty good, as I'm averaging, I think, something like in the 88,000 range, I think, with an Amagi. So, definitely okay with the Izumo now as she is. She's definitely at least performing quite well. Alright, so, yeah, earlier I got Random Citadel on a Broadside Iowa, and that's another thing you have to really keep an eye out for. When you're playing the Izumo, you're really looking for either the ideal opportunity to shoot at something, you're really looking for your opportunities. She's not really all that great shooting at things that might potentially be angled. No, and here's one of those days where you just get not great luck. I mean, the dispersion is actually pretty good, it's pretty tight, but look, just a couple short, a couple long, a taco totally dodges everything. That's yeah, It'll happen, and it's frustrating when it does, but you'll see later on she does miraculously do things very cooperatively, and it's good. So, typically speaking, if you're dealing with Bao'an battleships and you're Bao'an, you're realizing that you're probably not going to be penning each other much. So, recommendation at the time is either to fire HE or you fire AP into the superstructure and look for pens there. All right, that was a decent salvo on that Otago. There's the enemy German Tier 9 battleship, and it was Bao'an to me a little bit earlier, and you'll see that I just sort of said, eh, that's not really a good shot, so I went and went after something else in that case the cruiser. But once that battleship does turn broadside to me, I fire. Some of it was blocked by the island, but you're seeing that as soon as I'm starting to take fire from stuff, I'm immediately using the island to cover myself better so I don't take as many shells. Eh, did an okay penetrating damage salvo against the German battleship. You're not really going to be getting citadels on them, so penetration damage is okay. Alright, so I'm still paying attention to the map, and right now, if I rushed out right here, you'll see one of the problems is that if I rush out right now, all those enemy battleships that are coming towards me, they're still going to be angled. So if they just point their bow at me, they're going to pretty much bounce most of my shells. So not going yet, still shooting at things that I can't, peeking around, peeking out a little bit, and trying to keep myself as safe as possible while also outputting damage. I think by the time I decide to eventually go, and that's something you also have to do in the Azumos, decide when you go, when you actually want to engage somebody full on and go hardcore. Uh, and I think I start. I, I started it with maybe about, I think just under 50k damage, I'm not 100% sure, I think I started somewhere around there. And in a very short period of time, I racked up quite a lot of damage. Again, rate of fire mod will help, especially when you decide that you're going to go and brawl. Another thing about the Izumo is that you are going to be spending a lot of time bow in, which means that enemy battleships, when they see you, will tend to go bow in as well. And the thing about it is don't be afraid to ram. Ramming is something that I've done quite a bit, actually. I mean, there were a couple of situations where I ran into other battleships, and it was just like, okay, 
they're bowing, I'm bowing, it's a bit of a stalemate, screw it, let's just go for it. And it is something that you will have to do. And of course, I occasionally still get screwed by RNG, which is not fun, but if you're a battleship player, that is just par for the course. Alright, there we go, here, this is why the island's useful, see it? Otago sets me on fire, and even with one fire, I'm okay with just hitting the repair kit, putting it out, and just ducking behind the island. That is why the islands are super useful. Do be careful of planes, though. Planes are not your friends. A is a very strong, and so if they come after you while you're doing this, it's not much fun. Ideally, you want to at least have somebody to take cover with. So perhaps other cruisers, if, you know, maybe as a division. Izumo is one of those ships where I find solo play to be kind of crappy. You do at least want to have a division mate or so. All right, so there you go. Managed to pick up a kill. Now I look at the map and I see, okay, this is good. Everybody that's coming down onto the ACAP on the one line is showing broadside. I'm going to pop around this corner and I should have a decent number of targets to shoot at. All right, so I start coming around the corner. See the first target being a broadside Atago. And here I'm showing a bit of a broadside, but it was worth it. I got all nine guns out. And... 33,000. Triple Citadel, delete that Otago. All right, immediately as soon as that's done, it's going to go bow in. Enemy CV does manage to get some planes in and do, does some damage, but that's okay. Got the repair kit going, recovering some HP. Now I'm going bow into as many ships as I can. And I'm going to actually go and just, eh, you can call this YOLOing Banzai, whatever you want to call it. You just got to go sometimes. There we go. Hit another Citadel onto that other Otago, dropped him down to really low HP. Gonna let my secondary guns essentially deal with it. Uh, hit my damage control right there, put out those fires. Have a couple more seconds of immunity, waiting for my guns to reload. Remember that reload module is very, very important because it'll allow you to get shells out faster before other ships are really ready for them. That Iowa offering me as much of a broadside as I need. Bam, there goes four Citadels, 40 and I think it was a 49,000 damage there. Deleted that Iowa. Of course, now I'm running into, <laughs> I think, two Bismarcks in Iowa, so I'm not really going to live much longer here. But, very short period of time, went up about 100k damage, just being decisive, getting out there and taking advantage of, one, the reload, and two, of course, the fact that the shells are now nicely grouped together. And so, at the end there, on my first game of the day, 150k damage, pretty good. Um, didn't even get that many hits, but 9 Citadel hits, which is phenomenal amounts of damage. Uh, so total with the bonuses and everything, 12,000 experience, 443,000 credits. Uh, and pretty much get all of the experience bonuses right now, the silver, the gold, the bronze, all of that. Uh, if you take a look at my base experience, 2,366 in a battleship, which is pretty nice amounts of base experience. Um, again, one thing you I have to mention this is that Azumo does pretty good when you're top tier. However, beware of Yamatos. They are really damn scary. And then, of course, the damage panel and 148,252 damage with armor piercing and a tiny little bit of damage from secondaries. Again, for me, secondaries was just not really my thing. And that pretty much does it for the Azumo review. Hopefully I've given you guys a little bit of tips, advice on maybe how to play her, maybe how to think about playing her. Uh, do remember, again, to rehash everything. Islands are your friend, um, and do make sure that when you need to, you get decisive with the Azumo, get in there, and fight. Finally, one last thing is that this episode was voted on by the patrons, and I have to thank you patrons for your amazing support. You guys allow me to do what I do, and it wouldn't really be possible without your support. So folks, thank you so, so much for that. Aside from all that, folks, um, I bid you all a fantastic day. Of course, if you got questions about the Zumo, do leave those in the comment section below. Take care, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.